So the note is almost complete, except for these disgusting looking clear turn signals. Got everything else blacked out on the bike. We got the trick headlight that we have a video for from a couple weeks ago. Put the trick headlight on there, but the turn signals, womp, womp, womp. Just the stock ones are found on the US bikes. Pretty boring, incandescent, regular old bulbs. And if you've been watching our channel for years and years now, we've been doing LED upgrades for all Vespas, you know, start back from the LX was the first kit I did to kind of get rid of the ugly looking US turn cells. But back onto this GTS, we're gonna replace these with the, the tinted lenses featured in this video. So here's the complete kit, includes four complete turn signal assemblies that are all sealed up with the LED modules in there for both the white running lights and amber turn cells for front. And for the rear, you got the red uh, extra tail lights Looks really, really cool with the amber turn signals, along with the complete wiring kit to install this, this um, light kit on any GTS from 2010 on. So it has a new replacement turn signal flasher and all the wiring that tie it right in. If you have a 2020 Vespa GTS for the US market, they should have all the correct plugs because they've finally gone over to the European style turn signals with LEDs. From what I understand, this is 2019, I haven't seen the bike. Um, if that's the case, all you need to do is put the, the flasher in place along with the four sets of signals that are plug and play minus the rear with an extra power wire that will show how to hook up. So only basic tools are needed to install this kit. You're gonna need a number two Phillips, which is included with a toolkit on most Vespas. A T25, if you're dealing with a 2011 or 12 or newer Vespa, they've gone to mostly Torx style fasteners, T25. You'll need some type of pliers to depress the quick connections. A small flat blade screwdriver, electrical tape, or a few sets of zip ties to secure the wiring. It's a knife, whether it's an X-Acto blade or a pocket knife and a flashlight can be helpful for this install as well. So we'll start with the front pair of turn signals. Super easy install with just one wire that we need to tap into. Uh, one thing, if you place an order, this is January 2019, $50 or higher, you get this free magnetic screwdriver. It has a flat bladed uh, tip on one end and a magnet for picking up the screws. Made in USA, it's a pretty high quality little thing, little promo that we're giving away for the next couple months until supply, you know, while supplies last. But guess what? It's pretty handy for prying off the badge. So as with other videos, if you've seen it, all you do is pop a real thin flat blade screwdriver from the left side and just pry the badge off. Um, we're gonna pull this off because you can get access to the wiring a little bit easier. Take a T25 Torx driver, remove the single screw if you have an older model, it may have a Phillips screw underneath this cover. Use your magnet if you wanted to to pull that out. I'd easily pull that screw out. And just go ahead and lift the horn cover up and pull it away from the body. Next, we'll remove both the left and right front turn signals. Pretty simple operation. There's a single screw holding the lens in place. One thing to keep in mind, you could replace the screw with a black screw. You'll see the, uh, in the description the part number for the set of four screws that are stainless steel black coated screws. They look really nice with the tinted um, turn signal lenses versus these standard zinc plated silver screws. Just pull the turn signal right out. Pretty straightforward. Pull the rubber boot off the back and from the rear side of this socket, there's gonna be a small tab. You can use a flat screwdriver and just press the tab, or you could use your nail. Right now I don't have too many nails, I kind of ground them off from all the wrenching I've been doing. Just so pop those off. So we need to get access to the turn signal flasher and a single wire to run the running lights on the new turn signals. We're gonna take off this left side knee pad, as I call it. I don't know what the real technical term is, but I've always called it the knee pad. 
ever since the ET4 came out, um, kind of where your knees go. But pull that cover off with a single screw. Uh, this model's a T25 Torx. We'll take that right out. Pretty simple, sometimes a Phillips again, depending on the year. And if you look at this new 2019 bike, I think starting in 2017, they put a block off plate so you can't uh, get access to the turn cell flasher. Real simple to remove. There's, I think, six tabs. And just take a knife and cut the tabs and you'll be able to fold this out. And obviously you don't see this. The only function this serves is some type of anti-theft. So you, you, know, you can't hotwire the bike, I guess. You know, it's pretty silly. I've never seen theft attempts where they tried to pull that off. Maybe in some countries, it's an issue. Uh, if you do want to leave this in place, you can certainly remove the whole entire glove box. But quite a bit of work just to gain access. So you can fold that right out of the way if you want to leave it in, you know, in place, or you can cut it all the way out you know, with uh, uh, three remaining tabs. At this point, I can reach in there and get, gain access to the turn sail flasher. Let's see if the camera will capture the turn cell flasher. I'll shine a light on it. So that little module right there with the white connector that has both a white and a blue wire, that's your turn signal flasher. And we'll go ahead and remove that part and replace it with the LED turn signal flasher. So included with the kit is this assorted wiring for in installation on the US market Vespa GTS. You got a pair of harnesses to connect to the front turn signals. You have a small harness to tap into the power for the running lights. You have the LED compatible turn signal flasher as the stock flasher won't work correctly with these LED turn signals. And for the rear, these are a pair of the adapters to install the rear turn signals. So we'll take the left front turn signal and go ahead and plug the three pin connection in. It's got a tab that will lock. And you can leave the rubber boot in place or remove it if you like. You can cut it out of the way or you could pull it over the connection. We're gonna leave that in place. It serves no purpose for this uh, installation. Doesn't really get in the way. We're gonna take the single yellow wire and you should be able to put your hand back here and pull the wire towards the front here. And then go ahead and you put the turn signal in place. I would suggest tucking the connection up in the front area of, of the leg shield so you don't see it through the radiator grill. Go ahead and pop the, the signal in place just like the stock one. There's a single plastic tab that engages in the frame and then you can use the Phillips screwdriver to install the single screw. And again, we have a black version of the screw See the part number in the description, pretty inexpensive, looks a little bit better than a silver screw, but I'll just show you that's the stock screw that comes with the turn signals or with the scooter and it works just fine. So for the right side, repeat with the second set of connections here. Plug the turn signal in and we'll go ahead and pull this wire right through the back side, so it comes through that hole where the turn signal flasher is located. You can tuck the wiring in here so you don't see it through the radiator grill up towards the front. And go ahead and clip the turn signal right in place. Already looks better and they're not even turned on yet. And again, keep in mind we have these in clear as well as the tinted. So take the wiring harness with the pair of wide off yellow connections and take one of the connections and from the back side, go ahead and feed it towards the front. And make the single connection. It's got the rubber boot that goes over it. Make sure that rubber boot is slid over the electrical connection. Otherwise you may end up with a short that will blow the turn signal flasher fuse. Okay. So the yellow wire from your left turn signal, go ahead and plug that into the remaining connection. Again, slide the, the vinyl boot over the wiring and you're left with a single splice connection right here. We're gonna reach up in here. I know the camera doesn't illustrate too well and 
do two things. We're going to disconnect the turn signal flasher. And again, if, if you're not familiar with this, you could check out our other videos on removal of the glove box. It takes quite a few steps to remove the glove box. I would prefer to work in the tight quarters just to remove the turn signal flasher and replace it with the, the stock flasher. So or with the LED compatible flasher. And the flasher is two different styles. If you have a newer bike, it's a very small module as found on this bike. I'll pull this out. This is the flasher module found on, I would say, 2018 and later Vespas. If it's earlier from 2010, it will be similar shape to the LED flasher that's included with the kit. So on this uh, turn signal connection right here, there's a pair of wires. You've got a white wire and a blue wire, and there's electrical tape on it. You could slide some of the electrical tape down so you can gain access to the white wire. And you want to take this quick splice, and that little metal tab right there will straddle the wire and make an uh, electrical connection to the white wire. So what we'll do, Again, tight, tight quarters right here. Go ahead and slide that wire over, knee, over the, the quick, quick splice, and then go ahead and fold the plastic tab over. You, you want to take a needle nose and go ahead and squeeze the connection. So now it's got a, a positive tight, tight connection on there. And we'll go ahead and plug the flasher in. It only keys one direction. Uh, with this model, you don't want to use this rubber, this rubber connection right here. Two ways to go about it. You could cut it off with a knife, or you could slide it off this, this peg. And then now you're able to pop this turn signal flasher up into the rubber mount. It may be a little difficult to get through that rubber mount, especially considering you're doing this through this small access hole. Uh, another option is just to zip tie it up in there. Make sure the turn cell flasher is with the connector down because if it's upside down or on side, it may collect moisture in the case and will cause it to fail prematurely. Another option is to remove the rubber hanger for the turn cell flasher. It's got a one-way peg and you can pull it away from the bracket. It may take some force to pull it out and now you can pull this right, right out. And the way they install this if it's outside, you can um, slide this over, over the turn signal flasher. And that little slot right there can engage with that, the single slot that's on the, um, on the flasher itself here. And the idea here is to pop this back through the bracket and you can pull this little um, leader that's on this peg. And if you pull that through, it will re-engage. The flasher uh, rubber hanger into that bracket. So you can pull with the plier until the rubber peg will pull right through. And now the the turn cell flasher is hanging from the mount. So now you can replace the knee pad and horn cover. And tuck the wire out of, out of the way. snap the badge starting from the right side and then click the left side right in place. Let's check them out, see how they work. So you see it's got the nice white running light and runs amber, turns the, the running light off 
when you activate the turn signals. So on to the rear turn signals. Pretty much the same as the front. Single screw that holds the complete lens in place on both the left and right sides. And pull the signal away from the scooter, just like the front. This side's a little tighter with the wiring. So take your left LED turn signal assembly and go ahead and plug in the two pin adapter and plug it into the original turn signal. You can either use a zip tie or electrical tape to secure the excess wiring. As otherwise it will hang down. I'm going to use electrical tape. So two wraps is all you really need under here. And you have this single wire that's going to power the turn signals or the, the LED running lights that's built into the turn signal. So take the extra, extra power wiring, that's a yellow in color, go ahead and plug in one of the connections and we'll go ahead and tuck this in through the other hole right there for now. And before we button this up, we'll make sure none of the wiring can make contact to the tire, even when the suspension is compressed or touch the muffler or belt cover. The excess wiring, I've seen uh, rear kits installed where the wiring has made contact, hasn't been properly secured, and it will cause some problems. So you could take this wiring right here, and you'll feel the existing wiring. Two, two ways to go about it. You can wrap this wiring around it around the existing wiring to kind of secure it. And it keeps it out of the tire. I have the single, the extra yellow wire for the right side and I have the, the, the splice, the posi tap. This wire right here leads to both the left turn sail and the taillight assembly. We're gonna take a knife and carefully slice open the insulation, the electrical tape that insulates the wiring. So underneath this, you will expose a couple different colors, black being ground, it's not needed. The wire color that we do need is the yellow with the black stripe. Go ahead and pull that away from the electrical tape. And much like the front, when we tapped into that extra white wire on the turn signal, just go ahead and put the splice right in between so it straddles the yellow wire. And there's other ways to go about this. If you're looking to do uh, a very professional job, you can solder and heat shrink the wires. That's how we do it typically in our service department. Nice thing about this kind of connection, it's nice and simple and nothing like a soldering iron or heat is needed to install. So now that we got the, the running light wire tapped, we can wrap that connection with electrical tape. Again, there's very little clearance. You may be better off cutting a small piece of electrical tape. And I have my hands up through the fender well underneath and I'll go ahead and wrap a couple layers in there and that will keep the moisture off this connection. Another option is to pack the connection with dielectric grease, which is a special grease that protects electrical connections on automotive applications. The electrical tape will do the trick just as well. So with the right turn signal, go ahead and plug the two pin connection. Again, it's optional. If you wanna remove the rubber boot, you can do so.
And my recommendation is the wrap. Once you make the, the connection for the, uh, the running light for the, the right side, the yellow wire, you could fold it all over itself and then grab another piece of electrical tape or a zip tie and wrap that up with a couple layers just to bundle up to keep it out of the muffler. So you see it's kind of awkward, but I'm working from the underside and that's, that's the best way to go about it. This roll is small enough that I can kind of wrap it around, get a couple layers on there. Just to secure it, again, another option is use a zip tie. Maybe put a few layers on there. And now we can secure the turn signal in place. So you got the trick running lights that turn off with the turn signals. So we offer the set of four black powder coated screws, stainless steel, much better than the stock screws. The black screw complements the tinted lenses perfectly.